Hello everybody, it's Tim from the Amazing Mets podcast, and on today's episode of the Amazing Mets, we will be talking about what situation the Mets are in, we will be going over our farm a little bit, and we will be talking about just all the general news going around in the Mets organization at the moment. So, we're going to start off with um, what situation, or we're going to do um, a recap of the week. Um, so basically, this week it was a little bit of an interesting week for the Mets. Um, we've obviously had that Subway series, um, but, um, overall in June, we've, I'd say we've put up a pretty good fight. We obviously got off to a bad start, uh, losing three straight to, to Arizona and then the Giants, and, um, but overall we've, we've, we beat the Rockies, we tied the Yankees, and now this series against St. Louis, St. Louis uh, Cardinals is definitely, um, a huge for us. If we, if we can win this... Then we'll be up to um, thirty six and thirty five, I believe, and that that's that's just great. That's a great position to be in. We are six games back in the end, at least. So um, those six games would definitely help us. Or, excuse me, th- those three games would definitely help us cutting it in half a little bit. But um, after the um, Cardinals, we have the Braves, and we need to sweep that. We have Wheeler, DeGrom, and Mats. Hopefully, Mats can go back to what he was doing earlier in the season, um, hopefully DeGrom stays hot, and hopefully, um, what's called, and, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully those, we need those three pitchers to, um, stay hot, as, um, that's a big series for us, and we have Chicago for a full game, then we have another huge series against Philadelphia, then we're back in City Field against Atlanta, then we have our, those last Subway series, July 2nd and July 3rd, um, that'd be a good series to win too, but, um, overall I say we're holding up pretty well this month, it was definitely, um, definitely that five game losing streak, yeah, definitely that five game losing streak, um, getting swept by the Marlins, getting shut out two straight days, which is just, um, absurd, but, um, that's definitely gonna hurt us, especially losing to the teams like the Detroit Tigers, um, the, the Diamondbacks twice, and um, the Giants, but those those are teams we can't lose to if we want to be a winning team. Um, the Reds was enough. The Reds aren't very good, so that was a, that was another tough loss. As Diaz blew two games that series, but um, yeah, we just can't be blowing those games. But my resolution is, um, we just have to have a manager who can put a lightning bolt in this team. Mickey Callaway obviously obviously isn't putting enough pressure on the guys. It looks like they're trying, but like we we need something to happen in the clubhouse. Everyone needs to get pumped up. Everyone needs to realize we need to wake up right now. Let's just look at this. We we score seven runs, and then we let nine runs. We we pitch a we we let up one run. And we score zero runs. That's basically our season this year. So yeah, these two games against the Dodgers, we lose nine to eight. The next day, we lose two nothing. We're we're just inconsistent. One day our pitching is good, and one day our pitching sucks. One day our hitting is good, and one day our hitting sucks. We need everything to come together just for a, a few games and push ahead, and then we ha- then we'll have a few, um, then we'll have a little bit of a comfort space in a way. But yeah, just. It's just weird how no, nothing clicks together in a way. So, um, hopefully everything comes together. That all leads with a good manager who puts a spark in the team. Um, but yeah, hopefully, um, I wouldn't say fire Mickey Callaway right now. If some, if we just end up going like ten games back, it, it's just such a bad position to be in. Our farm sucks. Our team is just weird right now, as I said. Um, but yeah, it just. But yeah, excuse me. Um, we're, hopefully we get our stuff together. Hopefully, um, we have a few hard series coming up. But if we can manage to pull them off, I definitely have confidence in this team and what they can do. But um, definitely guys who have these are um this is my little segment of guys who have been contributing greatly. Um, starting off with my man, Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso had that home run that went, I believe, 438 feet uh, against the Yankees the other day. Or, um, 
yeah, the other day, and he's just been a stud. He has, he's definitely been our best offensive guy because um, his average is a little down, his strikeouts are a little high, but he's just had that power bat we haven't had in quite a while. But we haven't had this kind of power bat since Cespedes is bat in like 2015. So um, but yeah, he's getting the strikeouts down a little bit. Um, it's still high a little bit at 27.1 percent. Um, his walks are a little low, 8.4 percent. Um, his on base percentage, let's see that go up a little bit, maybe just 350. Right now it's currently 337. But um, enough of being too hard on the kid. He has 14. Let's talk about um his positives. He has 14 extra base hits, 22 home runs, 49 RBIs, 23 walks. Um, yeah, he's just been an absolute stud. He makes contact 75.54. Excuse me, 75 percent of the time. Um, but yeah, ever since he got drafted, he's been a stud. He's been putting up insane numbers that, um, not many people will do. So I love this kid. I hope he, I'm very excited for things he can do. His average is a little lower right now, but who cares about average, if we're being honest. Um, at 254, he's never been an average type guy since double A. And yeah, since double A. But that's what we're expecting out of him. He's just a power guy. Um, the other, or other, um, person who has definitely been holding it down most of the season, but if, if, um, P. Alonso goes into a little slump, then we have my man Jeff McNeil coming up, he is our contact bat of the team, so we have a power bat and a contact bat, um, but Jeff McNeil's, I don't know how he's not even, he's not even close to being an all-star, this man, just cause he doesn't have home runs, just cause he doesn't have all, all the RBIs, this man is so underrated, he strikes out only 10% of the time, just every, Every ten at bats, he strikes out. Strike out. I'll, I'll take that, a hundred percent of the time. He makes contact eighty percent of the time he swings the bat. That's just crazy. Eighty percent of the time, he makes contact. That that's just crazy to think. Um, he's definitely been going into a little bit of a slump lately. Um, he had the homer against the Yankees the other day, but other than that, nothing too exciting. He almost put one out earlier in the game today. But, um, just shy. But, um, let's go into his other stats. He is definitely, he hasn't been a power bat, but uh, as I said earlier, he's not expected to, putting up three home runs, 20 RBIs. I believe that's the reason why he's not going to be voted into the, um, All-Star game, as he doesn't have high power numbers and just is a nitty-gritty guy. Has an on-base percentage well over 400. Um, average, still per, well over, um, 300. Slugging percentage, 472. Um, his weight on base average is 379. Um, he has zero stolen bases this year. Um, but yeah, overall, he's been a great... He's been solid in the field. He's, he's gone everywhere we needed him to. He goes to third base, second base. He's on a little bit of a stretch going to second base, as Robinson Cano is on the injured list for the second time in the same month. But, um... Yeah, so he's he's been bouncing around everywhere. Um... This man can play anywhere. He's he's our emergency catcher. He plays. These are the positions. He can even play first base. Matter of fact, he he will never play first base. But he just he's just that good. Like it's always great to have a guy like this. It reminds me of like a T.J. Rivera type guy, Wilmer Flores type guy. But he he knows how to swing the bat. T.J. Rivera, Wilmer Flores always went to the little slumps. Um, Wilmer Flores bad like two forty last season. Nothing comparable to Jeff McNeil with three forty. Like beats him by a hundred points. But which is just insane, just thinking about it. But this man can even play outfield, infield, you name it. He, he. That's what I love about guys like this. Not only that, can they swing the bat, they they get they put less pressure on the team. They give the team so much flexibility. Like if Todd Frazier's on the street, they don't know, like, oh, do we sit McNeil or do we play Frazier? It's just it's just like you don't you don't know what to do. Like when you if he only played third base or second base. Robinson Cano and Todd Frazier got a hot streak. Where do we put him? Where do we put him? But now we have... We don't really have a solid left fielder at the moment as Brandon Nemo is currently fighting through an injury. Um, so he played a little bit of left field, but we're starting to see... Um, um, what's called? J.D. Davis out there and Todd Frazier at third base. But that's that's what I love about this team. They, they can flex anywhere. They can go anywhere they are needed to go. Even the outfield. That's that's what we just got love about these guys. They they play their hearts out. Another player I like to talk about is my man Jason Vargas. Jason Vargas 
absolutely was the reason why we won against the Yankees the other day. He absolutely held it down, getting us to win, no doubt about it. But um, he only let three and runs against a very hot uh, Yankees lineup. Um, he didn't strike out many, only striking out three. Um, but yeah, he just he just looked very like calm up there. That's what you gotta love about him. He doesn't really stress out like. Sometimes it's always, always good to feel like a sense of urgency, but just not like he's playing in the one of the biggest series. Definitely, yeah, definitely one of the biggest series this whole year, and he just didn't like feel any sort of kind of pressure. Like, just like look at the, look at this. This is against the. This was against the forty and twenty four Yankees offense, who's putting up like eight to nine runs a game, as they did the game before against Zach Wheeler. It just it's just crazy to see. This this is the this is his stat. Um it's always good that we put up ten runs, but um he pitched uh in six innings of work he left seven hits, three earned runs, two walks, which is pretty good to see as he as his walks and hits have been a lot higher this season. Three strikeouts and surprisingly the, he kept the Yankees in the ballpark laying up zero home runs and that's that's the Yankees' um power power right there. Like they like hitting home runs with that short porch, and um right field, left field, all, all everywhere. That that's what they did. And we attacked James Paxton early, which he got love as he let up uh, six earned runs in two and two thirds pitching. Um and we made them go to their um bullpen and we just hit their bullpen. We Chance Adams came in, we put up a two spot against him, and then they um. We put up a three spot against him, excuse me. And then they put in uh, Tarpley in the ninth, and we just put up another run off him. So, yeah, y'all love this team. Um, yeah, so we, we got very start early, scoring six before they could put up their one off a towards single. But um, I'm very excited for the series coming up in July. But Jason Vargas, he's been an absolute stud in my opinion. Jason Vargas was a person that we signed in the 2017 offseason. And we we didn't get what we won out of him last year. Every every time Vargas went on the mound, it's like, oh, Vargas is on the mound. We're going to lose. But this season, it's like, this is going to be interesting. All, all my Yankee friends, like, at school were like, yes, we have to tee off against this old man in our short porch stadium meant for home runs. And he's a home run pitcher, fly ball pitcher. We, we got, we're going to crush him. But no, he he kept him in the ballpark, which you got to love. Um, this man's a, this man's a, um, a, com- a competitor. He. He's um in a, he's thirty six years old and he just he's just throwing the ball and making them make contact three strikeouts that gives a lot of credit to the defense too, so he's letting them put the ball in play and they just couldn't do anything with it. Um, this season he he has the second highest ERA. Jacob Degrom being the first at three point four two, but um he's has three point six eight ERA this year. Got to a very 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 tough um start this year. Um, as he let up, like, seven runs in the first, en- like, first two innings or something like that. That's the reason why his era is a-, a little bit. But, again, he's not meant to be our, like, two pitcher, which he currently is right now. He's meant to be, like, our four or five pitcher, which is just crazy. Like, now now he's our two pitcher, two or three pitcher. Syndergaard and him could flip-flop. But, um, yeah, he's been throwing a lot more strikes this season. Throwing 502 strikes, 221 balls. No one probably cares about that, but... His hits have been very low this season, actually. In 51 in a one-third inning pitch, um, he's at 49 hits, so that's, like, less than a hit per inning, which you gotta love. Like, his K per nines, um, is 7. Um, his walks, his average is 246, so he's, he, that's pretty low, actually, for him. Compared to last year, um, his average is, like, almost 280, 290, which is just crazy. Um... But yeah, he's definitely looking like his um, 2017 first half with the Royals. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't go back to his uh, 2017 second half, what, which he had with the Royals. Um, hopefully, he definitely is showing a lot more promise. His his records even out 500. Um, obviously, wins don't matter as we saw last season. But um, just good to see. Um, just good to see. Um, but another guy I like to talk about is my man, Danny Etcheria. Danny Etcheria has. He was signed to a minor league contract. wasn't wasn't meant to do anything really. But this is where you gotta love Brody Step signings. Brody Step signings really came in kind of clutch here. But um, as um, we have two Step signings currently in our starting lineup. Yesterday we had a Danny Ashbury and Carlos Gomez. If we didn't have those, who do we have? Like, 
safe, safe reading.